Okay, friends, let's get to it. I want to bring you one more talk on the healing issue. Uh, I've been doing this now for, this is episode number three. Uh, first episode, kind of in this three-talk mini-series, really took on the idea of who God is, that he's good, that he's for us, that he doesn't condemn, that he doesn't cause people to be afflicted with illness. Uh, second talk, we shifted and said, okay, let's discuss the faith issue and let's make sure we get that one right. And the way we get that one right is not by aspiring to have a certain amount of faith, is not by, uh, well, we're restraining God because we we didn't have faith. That's our fault. We weren't healed because of the faith issue. We, we, we kind of walked through all of that and said the bigger issue is not faith, it's honor. And in no instance in the scripture do we see a formula based on faith and that being the determining factor of what God will or won't do when somebody needs a breakthrough, especially in the area of physical healing. Now, today, I want to take on this idea of healing, and I want to show you something that's very different about healing than what you might have thought. Now, I'm going to cover it pretty quickly, maybe 20 minutes-ish or less. So, if you want more information on the topic today or the other topics that we've discussed, if you'll go down to the show notes, there are three options for you right there. One is free. One costs you just a little bit. One will cost you more. So the free is a seven lesson mini course that I put together several years ago that takes on this idea of healing, of supernatural healing. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you what we're talking about a little bit today, natural health and how those work together. Uh, the second option for you below is there's a book. We found some uh, in our boxes several years ago. We were renovating, cleaning up the garage, setting up a shipping station down here. I'm I'm talking to you from my shipping station where the books and shirts and hats and other items are where you place an order. Beth you know, ships out everything, prints the label, literally right here. It comes out, that paper right there. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, there's a book that's available. We found them. They're a couple years old. We didn't want to toss them away, but uh, just make them available for you. So if you pay basically what amounts to the shipping and handling, we'll get that to you totally uh, within a day, we'll ship it. Um, third option is the on-demand course about healing. All of those links are there below. Uh, and, I, and I tell you, that was one of the first robust uh, masterclass type courses I put together on my website and still remains one of my favorites. So if you are looking for a physical breakthrough, if you are discouraged because of what you've been taught about faith or perhaps your lack of it, if you're looking for just even a step-by-step -step process to get this ordered in your head so that you can move forward, then I invite you to take advantage of that. Uh, it's all available there for you. Okay, so this episode... I want us to break down the topic of healing. One of the issues that we see is, uh, th this was a, I'm not going to say a, a crisis of faith for me, but this was, let's say, an area of concern. When you read the scripture, it says, like in Matthew 8, after he healed Simon Peter's mother-in-law, everybody gathered together at the door of his house and then it says, Jesus healed them all, A-L-L, -L. every one of them. He then later said, John 14, 12, after he had already anointed and empowered the disciples to go out and heal, and they had, and not just the 12, but in one instance, he, he empowered 70 more people. So, 80-ish of them or more are going out and healing people. It was a cornerstone of the presence and power of the kingdom. Like it was one of the proofs that the kingdom of God was among them was because physical healing was happening. John 14, 12, after all of this has occurred, Jesus says, you'll do greater the works than I do because I'm going to the Father and I'm sending the Holy Spirit to be your present empowerment 
and comforter as you do this. And by the way, he's going to continue teaching you and giving you recall of what I've taught you and what I've done so that you can do this to an even greater degree. But then now, it doesn't seem that they're all healed. So you think, well, what gives? Um, what, what is the discrepancy? And that's why I think we see that discrepancy. We start interjecting other ideas like the two misconceptions predominantly that I, I think we broke through on the previous two episodes. Misconception number one is, hey, God causes this and he chooses some people to just have a, a bad short straw. He chooses them to be sick. He chooses them to be unwell. Or misconception number two, they're unwell because of their lack of faith. And the reality is, sometimes, yeah, this side of heaven, we're, we're just not going to understand it all. It's, it's, a, it's a broken world. And we do trust, as Ecclesiastes says, all things will be made beautiful in their time. Doesn't mean all things are beautiful. Just means sometimes there's a bigger canvas that's being painted upon than we see. And as hard as it is, we, we don't have the whole story. Anyway, in the New Testament, th there are two predominant words we see for healing. And they're not the same. Um, one of the words is this, and this is how we most often attribute Jesus to healing. Uh, the, the word would be iomai. Now, that's kind of transliterating from the Greek alphabet to the English alphabet, and I understand totally different alphabet. So, we're just kind of taking our best shot at pronouncing that, iomai. If you were writing it in English, I would spell it I-A-O-M-I-A, iomai. -A, I it means miraculous or instantaneous healing. Again, this is how we most often exclusively envision Jesus healing. Uh, you know, the blind man can see. The leper is instantly cleansed. The paralytic can walk. The deaf person can now hear. The woman who's been over sits up straight. The woman with the flow of blood now cleansed, pure, no bleeding. Iomai, instantaneous healing supernatural, cataclysmic, no doubt that God broke in in that moment. We see that word used. Now, this is important. In the New Testament, 30 different times. Iomai, instant, miraculous, abrupt, supernatural, breakthrough, 30 times of instantaneous healing. When Simon Peter's mother-in-law is healed by Jesus, Iomai instant, probably on her deathbed, cured, completely healed, whole. No doubt it's a supernatural breakthrough. There's this other word in the New Testament. You'll recognize it, therapeuo. Let me spell it, T-H-E-R-A-P-E-U-O, therapeuo. Uh, you probably recognize therapy. Some of you have been to a uh, as as I, I've been, you've been to an emotional soul counselor, therapist. You talk through, work through past, sometimes even present things. Uh, some of you have been injured in sports or car accident or you just have surgery. And, and you've been, yeah, I've been to one of these too, a physical therapist. They help you process and walk out healing whether it's emotional or physically, over time. Now, we are talking about, in this episode, physical healing. Just to be clear, uh, therapeuo, translation, uh, it means to serve, to attend to, or to wait upon menially. It means to heal gradually over time with care. Now, if you go to any lexicon of any pastor, Bible teacher, professor from a seminary, religious, even secular, religious institution or department of philosophy at a state school, and you get a lexicon of the New Testament off their shelf, it's going to say that that word iomea appears in the New Testament 
30 times. The word therapuo appears in the New Testament 40 times. So slightly more, um, 30% more than Iomai. So from 30 to 30, 30% of that would be 10 more times. 30 to 40. Um, now, I believe in Iomea. I don't think that miracle has passed away. I've seen it too many times in, in my own family. Uh, my brother, he gouged an eye when he was younger. He was never supposed to be able to see. Uh, this was in, when he was about the second grade. I, I was in the fourth grade-ish. Uh, they put an eye patch on, took it off a week later. The doctor gave it really kind of the worst case scenario. Today, his eyes completely whole. It's been for 40 years. He's in his 40s, nudging like me towards 50. He he still doesn't even need glasses. I've got reading glasses. That's Iomei. That's instant healing. I, I never gallops an eye on. I've got reading glasses. He's completely whole. Uh, my sister had a severe heart murmur when she was a young child. My mom and dad took her to a specialist in downtown Houston. That's where we lived, <clears throat> outside of Houston. My dad prayed for her, took her back a few weeks later. The physician asked if they could use the new chart on the next visit side-by-side side with the old chart in his classes to show them from the same kid what a sick heart looked like on paper and what a perfect heart looked like on paper. They still use that chart. Decades later, that's Iomei. Um, another one, my, my uncle died twice at UAB, University of Alabama, Birmingham Medical Center, twice. They didn't pump, aggressively resuscitate, didn't shock. The doctor walked into the waiting room. People had prayed. He was clinically dead. Both times, another miracle. That was 25 years ago. It's Iomei. I do believe today Jesus still does Iomei. Instantaneous, abrupt, cataclysmic, breaking in, healing people in the moment. However, I also believe that he uses this other one called Therapuo. Uh, natural means over time to heal. And what's odd is, is if I said, hey, um, how many of Jesus's healings in the New Testament, like I ask you a question, how, or how many of all the healings in the New Testament were not miracles? That, that's a weird question, isn't it? How many, how many of the miracles weren't miracles? <laughs> you know, you would, you'd say, well, they, they all were, but but we see it 40 times, they're not. Jesus heals Simon Peter's mother-in-law in Matthew 8, 15. He heals her instantly. That's an Iomei. She's up. She serves. She starts cooking. Everybody hears about it. The whole city gathers to gather. Matthew 8, 16, the next verse says, When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him. He drove out spirits with the word. He healed all the sick. That, that word right there, Matthew 8, 16, healed all, healed, therapeuot. He therapeuot them all. Some translations of Scripture will say this, uh, with the word, he healed them all. Or some translations will say, he taught them how to be well. That's that's therapeuo. That's a way that he ministered to the people. In Acts 28, 7 through 9, there is a story where Paul uh, is with a group of about 270 passengers. They shipwreck and land on the Isle of Malta, and they take Paul to Chief Publius, who is on his deathbed, probably with something like dysentery. The Bible details that Paul Iomei, the chief, he healed him instantly and he was made whole. Now, let me just make a footnote right here. Luke, the man writing that story, Luke is the one who wrote the book of Luke and wrote the book of Acts. Uh, Luke is 
the most prolific author in the New Testament. He wrote more pages. Paul wrote more books. Luke wrote more pages. Luke is also the most prolific on the subject of the Holy Spirit. And he's a doctor. So Luke is going to be honest either way. If it's a miracle, he's going to say it's a miracle because he believes in the Holy Spirit. He's the one that tells us about the coming of the Holy Spirit and then the moving of the Holy Spirit all throughout the book of Acts and people encountering relationship with the Holy Spirit. If someone is going to teach you from a Pentecostal church today about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they are going to quote Luke from the book of Acts. So he writes and believes in the Holy Spirit. Luke will tell us if it's a miracle, but as a trained medical professional in that day, he will tell us if it's not a miracle. So Luke says in Acts 28, 7 through 9, that Paul Iomai, he miracled Chief Publius, who was on his deathbed. And then it says all the islanders, they gathered together, and then it says everybody came And everyone who was sick on the island came and was therapeutic. He taught them all how to be well. So you think about it like this, practically. Can Jesus Iomai lung cancer? Uh, Yeah, uh, but he could also therapeutic it and teach you the ills of smoking. And then you walk out that health journey over time by what you do. Can he, Iomai, heal diabetes? Yes, and he can also, Therapuo, give us wisdom on how to make healthy eating choices. Can he heal, uh, let's let's say an STD, sexually transmitted disease? Yes, I've, I've seen him do it when I was working at a transitional facility that was helping people come off drugs, off the streets, out of human trafficking. But we saw it, instant healing. He could also therapeuo show you and display the beauty of true intimacy, of giving yourself wholly, completely, only to one other person. Can he heal physical nuisances? Absolutely. It can also give us directions on being alive. You, you think about it. I read somewhere that cancer is... environmental. It's what you eat. Stress, lack of exercise. It's, you know, taking, taking in things we shouldn't and not getting enough of other things that we need. 5% of it can be attributed to to genetics. Not not being flippant with it at all, not explaining it away. If that's the case though, 5% of it needs a miracle. Because it's, it's genetic. Like we don't, we don't have a way around it. Like there's nothing else we can do. Yet at the same time, 95% could be therapeuo. Therapeuo and move forward. I remember years ago, I was about 50 pounds heavier than I am now. Uh, overweight, sluggish, dragging, low energy levels, couldn't sleep at night. Oddly enough, during the day, I would crash digestive issues, I mean, I mean, like blood in my stool, daily bouts with diarrhea, shortness of breath, even though I'm exercising regularly, creaking bones, um, hardly able to walk if I woke up in the middle of the night, you know, or when I woke up first thing in the morning, like it took me a minute of sitting on the bed to get my legs moving. I constantly need to get up and go to the restroom in the middle of the night, inability to lose weight regardless of my activity level. I I made some changes health-wise and some breakthroughs happened instantly. Slept through the night. Snoring, gone. Digestive issues all improved, which I think was an Iomai. And then I experienced this therapeuo as I was walking out. Other things, energy levels increased, continued improving. I became stronger physically. My thinking became sharper, muscle and joint pain diminished. It was as if things just shifted. I kind of liken the two different words maybe to this, if you're thinking of it. 
you know, so often we think that if we won the lottery, all of our financial issues would be resolved. Yet the statistics show that something like 90% of the people who win the lottery will be broke within two to three years, even in a worse condition than they were before they won the lottery. Right now it's fall. I'm watching football. A lot of these guys are going to make multi-million year contracts in the NFL next year. Some of them are already making hundreds of thousands of dollars on NIL, name, image, likeness. Yet you, you think about five years from now, most of those people will have nothing to show for any of it. It will be as if that financial miracle, a money I owe may I never happened. I'll be honest, I've seen people physically healed a miracle. And then it seems like six months later, a year, two, three, it disappears. And I used to rack my head just wondering what what happened? Are they are they being punished because of something they did or did they not keep the faith quotient up or you know and but you go no 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 all all the stuff that we've already learned god's not condemning them or giving them the illness and there's not there's not something he's holding back because of because of faith you think about it and you say well man, maybe in the same way that you've got to steward the money you also have to steward the health if you want to keep it. And the other side is true too. You, you don't have to have a financial miracle in order to be financially stable and even financially well off. You know people like I do that never made a lot of money on any given year yet at the end of their life they've just accumulated and saved diligently enough that we would say is miraculous financially, if it all dropped on us at one shot. Proverbs talks about that. Go to the ant, see how, stores it away bit by bit by bit. That kind of money doesn't dwindle quickly, doesn't evaporate. And I just think maybe there's a lesson there. I remember teaching this at a church one Sunday morning several years ago, and just kind of came up with this phrase, miracle or no miracle, your healing can start now. So if a if miracle comes, we pray, and we're going to pray and believe and not blame you if it doesn't happen. We're not going to credit you if it does happen. It's it's on God, you know, and we're not going to blame the person praying or credit them if it happened or doesn't happen, and we're not going to condemn and all of those, you know, other odd things that so often it's so easy for us to do in the lack of clarity and answers, we're going to pray, realizing God is good, and take our best shot at the prayer. If it doesn't happen, we'll pray again. But if it doesn't happen, we'll also make some lifestyle choices in line with the result that we want. Sometimes that means evaluating our sleep habits. Sometimes it means evaluating some of our Vices, you know, you too much sugar, too much alcohol, too much nicotine. You could decide what the levels on any of that should be. And I know you go, well, those aren't spiritual issues. I'm like, maybe they are if they're affecting you physically, right? And your body's the temple, and your spirit and soul are contained in that temple, and you know, you can't outrun your body in terms of living your purpose. If you're sick on the couch, you can't live out the purpose and calling God has on you. So it is a spiritual issue. So say if the miracle doesn't come, we're going to make decisions in line with the lifestyle that we want. Remove the stress. Get the right amount of rest. Get the nutrition. Remove some of the lack of forgiveness and some of the just the toxicity to use just such an overused, diluted now term. Um, but if the miracle comes, it happens, we're also going to live lifestyle stuff, therapeutic stuff that supports the miracle so we can maintain it, not to earn it. 
but just so that we can honor it, steward it, tend to it well. Do you see? So, if you are needing a miracle, my prayer is that the Lord break through and do something to you, for you, that absolutely only he can do. And if and when he does, may you live in alignment with the lifestyle that you want. If the I Omega comes, may you therapeuo and steward it forward. And if it doesn't come, may you therapeuo it anyway. May you live in alignment with the life that you see him offering to you and may incrementally bit by bit through the stewarding of it, something so cataclysmically awesome occur for you in the realm of your physical health that it could only be attributed to a miracle that you've already begun to steward. You see, grace, peace, my friend. I'll see you soon.